everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about a topic that is something I've seen discussed a little bit online recently but probably not as much as it should be and that's the whole situation around Cody Ko and Tana Mojo? Mon, 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 I, why does everyone struggle to say her name? Also I'm English, I feel like it doesn't come naturally to us. Um, I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. It's honestly f disgusting. And I also think when you're that age, you think you know everything and you think you're way more mature than you actually are. Mm -hmm. And then from our age now, we can look at it in hindsight, it's 2020. And it's like, oh my God, you were a child. Yes. You were like, I, to, to be 100% truthful, when I look back at the Cody situation, it is, I definitely am like, why was he doing that? For a very, very brief bit of background, um, Tana has been a creator on YouTube since she was like, what, maybe 15 or so, maybe a little bit younger. And I remember seeing her story times way back then. And yeah, I thought she was entertaining. I thought she was a great storyteller. She's also done a lot of problematic stuff, but I also kind of feel like she's learned a lot and grown over the years, but she's not someone that I've exactly watched closely or really watched at all for like a long time. <laughs> Cody Ko was another creator who I think he started out on Vine, if I'm remembering that correctly, and then he moved over to YouTube, and he got really big for doing a lot of comedy videos, especially with his friend No- Noel? Noel, yeah. Dan used to watch his videos quite a lot back in the day, so I saw a lot back when he was first getting big on YouTube, and it's weird, because like, while I liked his videos at first, I did feel like there was a misogynistic undertone to a lot of his jokes, and it's weird because he's very popular and people didn't want to hear that. Like I said, I don't know when it was, maybe like a year or so ago, six months ago, something like that. I made a video on Girl Defined and in it I spoke about how I understood why Bethany was upset by some of the videos made about her. For example, I felt that a lot of the videos that Cody and Noel made on Girl Defined and Bethany did have misogynistic tones to it. It was just mocking, it was just kind of cruel. And a lot of people in the comments were like, no, you just don't get Cody, that's just his style of humor. He's really nice, he would never do that. And I was like, well, I disagree, but okay. Why do they smile like there's someone behind the camera with a gun? <laughs> <laughs> no. that. Yeah, these girls. Yeah, that's you guys must be so fun in bed, <laughs> She looks like a, she's dressed like a bath bomb. <laughs> <laughs> How funny is this that it's, not even part of the, their religion. They just they just did it because they're insane. Yeah. <laughs> they just read it in a book somewhere. We're like, yeah, yeah. How crazy is that? Uh huh. And back when uh, Tana was really young, she did collaborate with a lot of older YouTubers. There's a video of her and Shane Dawson collabing when I think she was like maybe 16 or something like that. And it's really weird because he's a grown adult man and she like straddles him and. Like, and he makes jokes about her peeing on him at one point. It's very, very odd. When Shane and I met, I was 17, and it was just like a thing, like every single thing he this said This sounds like the start of a really scary <laughs> Tumblr post, and I don't like it. <laughs> when Shane and I met. <laughs> really, I was 17, and it was just like a thing, you know? Like, it was just everything I said. Like, if you said something in front of me that was like sexual, you'd be like, she's 17. We were gonna watch horse p and you were like, oh my right. god, she's 17. Okay. It was just like a struggle, you know? Yeah. yeah. So now I'm 18, and today we're gonna do things that are... I have a list of things that I want you to do now that you're 18. Shane's gonna take my... Have you ever had sex with a YouTuber? Who? <laughs> no. <laughs> no one. Okay. Alright. Mm-hmm. Why did I pee? Oh, you're peeing? <laughs> it like almost came out. <laughs> 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 oh, I can't pee on you. No, I can't pee on you. Can pee on you. Can pee on you. Can pee on you. And then Tana and Cody collabed on a video when she was just 17 and he was 25 and it turns out that they did sleep together at that time as well. And while there was a lot of speculation about it at the time because of clips like this... Right, so <laughs> it was never confirmed until I think maybe like a year or two ago when Tana kind of let slip about it during one of her live shows and then she kind of like tried to push it off as like, no, no, jo I'm joking, I'm joking, I was 18, I was 18. And she kind of tried to cover it up to protect him, as you do. And then it came out again a few months ago, and now she's finally confirmed it publicly on a podcast, on, on her podcast. And I think that this whole situation 
is something that's kind of worth talking about and discussing because I think we can learn a lot from this around the topics of consent, about how we process things that have happened to us when we were younger as adults. And I think a lot of the comments that people are leaving about this and the way people are talking about this is really, really problematic. And that's mostly what I want to focus on today. What I will, uh, sorry, this isn't scripted. I'm just kind of talking off the top of my head. And I'm a bit brain foggy at the minute. One of the things that did really surprise me when I kind of heard about this though, is that like Tana's 26 now and that poor girl has been through a hell of a lot of crap in her life. She has been mistreated by so many people. She's been taken advantage of by so many people. She has been hurt by so many people. And she's clearly not come out of that unscathed. But at the same time, I feel like the way she spoke about this topic in this particular podcast was with a maturity and a sincerity that I've not seen from her before. And I kind of really commend her for that. I think she approached it really, really well, which is great. I think I pulled some clips from the this podcast episode. I think let's have a watch of these together. I'll kind of give you my thoughts. And then I've got a lot of comments from people that they post on the internet that I would like to discuss in more detail. So let's do that. I have tried to film what I'm about to try to film like countless times now. Okay. I, am, I don't know what's happening in life right now with the universe, but I'm learning a lesson once again that I've learned so many times about I can't just be saying shit. Mm, and yeah. I don't want to blame myself here for this situation, but it's like I'm now in this position to have to address it because there I went again saying shit, you know, and it's just a classic case of I say something fleeting yeah. in the ways that I say something, and then it is taken very seriously because I'm usually trauma dumping and breadcrumbing with a giggle. Yeah, and right? it usually is pretty serious, and we're just so flippant about it, and we'll just like talk yeah. some shit. And that's, that's always how I've just dealt with shit or made light of shit. Like I'm just the type of person who does say things in a very like flippant manner. And then it's like, oh fuck, no, nobody else is laughing. We were on tour. We were saying a bunch of shit on stage. However, I understand that this isn't just some crazy tea. It was a crime. Yeah. And I've tried to talk about this a million times and I feel like I never have the right words. Mm. But it's everywhere all over the internet and I know people want me to talk about it and I'm going to do my best right now, you know? I mean, I hooked up with Cody Cole when I was 17 and he was 25. Mm. Yeah, it happened. And I think that, first of all, it's really, I'm trying to think about it from a perspective of like a younger sister or someone that I really care about. Even the other day, like I was texting just about her life and everything that's going on in her life right now. And I really, I thought to myself, like how protective I was over her, especially before she was 18. And if something like that was happening to her, I would never let it fly. Well, you know what I mean? It's honestly fucking disgusting. And I also think when you're that age, you think you know everything and you think you're way more mature than you actually are. Mm -hmm. And then from our age now, we can look at it in hindsight, it's 2020, and it's like, oh my God, you were a child. Yes. You were young. I think a lot of things like that happened to me as well because I really did have to grow up severely at a, like a really young age. 100%. You know what I mean? Like by the time I was 16, I truly was just like, even when it came down to knowledge and wisdom and everything, I was a 21 year old. You were forced and, to grow up so early. And because of that, a lot of shit ended up happening to me that probably shouldn't have happened, right? Yeah. And So I think the big thing that this ties into is that a lot of people are asking things like, well, why is she talking about this now? Why is she bringing this up so many years later? She didn't need to do this. He's married with a kid now. Why would she do it now and ruin his life? And like, I'm sorry, but if someone's hurt you, especially when you were a child, there's no limit on when you can speak about it. You speak about it when you're ready. You know, you don't have to do it with X amount of years or it doesn't count. You do it when you're ready. And sometimes it can take, in her case, like 11 years. It can take that long to process these things or longer. I think it's entirely unfair for people saying like, well, she should have known when she was still a kid that it was bad. Like, no, she... <sighs> and I think what a lot of people are overlooking is that Hannah is now basically the same age that Cody was when she slept with her. So she's now looking at this with a perspective that she's not had before, where she's like, well, I can now look at 17-year-olds and realize how messed up that is because she wouldn't sleep with a 17-year-old. So she's asking, damn, why did he, you know? The other thing is with this clip, Tana is addressing comments like this, where this person says, 
Tana needs to make an actual statement about it. She keeps doing these little side comments about it, but if something happened, criminal possibly, then it should be actually addressed. Only talking about it in quips and digs makes the situation less serious. And I have to, and I do have to disagree. I don't think Tana owes us a statement at all. I think her speaking out like this on the podcast, like finally saying something definitive about it is incredibly brave and it should be commended, but it's not something she owed anyone. And if she wants to say little things here and there, she's allowed to do that. If she never wants to speak of it, she's allowed to do that. If she wants to make a statement, she's allowed to do that. I think as a victim, she's allowed to cope and talk about things however she wants to and needs to. I don't think... I'm, I'm tired of people saying that, like, well, if you're a real victim, you need to handle it in this way and say this and do this and do this and you have a responsibility to behave like this and this and this when no, she doesn't. The only responsibility she has is to herself and to help herself heal and she can do that however she likes, you know? There's other comments like this. The way this crap happened almost 10 years ago and y'all still haunt for a way to cancel not only him but anyone at all amazes me. And like, I'm sorry, but again, I couldn't disagree more. I think there are some things where if something's happened a long time ago, we can forgive people for and we can be like, yeah, they've changed, you know, it's in the past. Like, stupid tweets as a teenager. I think a lot of people did that and like, I mean, like I look back at stuff that I posted as a teenager and yeah, I was cringy as hell and stupid as hell. And admittedly, I've never done anything like saying racial slurs or making homophobic jokes. I've, I've never ever done anything like that. But you know, things like, I don't know, being excited about going to a restaurant and posting up about it. Like it's cringy to look back at now, you know? Cause I think everyone, does cringy, stupid stuff when they're a teenager. It's just different people had lapses in judgment. And I think that's something we can look back and forgive and say, for God's sake, like they've clearly learned from it now. Their behavior shows they've learned and grown. That's something where we can be like, God, it was 10 years ago, calm down. But when it comes to something like a crime, like for example, you know, they murdered someone and were never caught or punished. Can we really say, guys, it was 10 years ago, get over it. No, it's the same with things like sexual assault. It's the same with things like sexual assault, sexual harassment, rape, anything to hurt children. I think with things like that, there's no time limit. There's no time limit on when victims need to speak up. There's no time limit on when we can get mad about it. And I think the other thing that's a concern here is that, and I think just because it was 10 years ago, it doesn't really matter because we haven't actually seen growth or change from Cody. I mean, yeah, yes, okay, he's married now. He's got a kid. That is a different change in circumstance, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, like, his opinion on what he's done has changed, because listen to this clip. And it, you, I just think about, like, Kelsey and the baby and whatever. There was... Oh, my God. Like, there was a while ago where I think I said something about it online, and it was starting to surface, and he texted me, like, are we good? And was like... And, like, mm. I said, yeah. And, like, he was like my wedding's coming up like yada 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 and i was like fuck fuck and then now it's like all these reddit threads like if my name's on any thread it's all getting deleted like i know it's it's just a weird fucking fucked up situation that is where it's like and i just feel like if i said it on stage i now have to sit here and like explain myself and i kind of just wish i didn't because it's like what's sad is i don't think you have to sit here and explain yourself i think he has to sit there and explain himself yeah but i mean either he's gonna deny it or admit to it like there's no real like further and like i'm not seeking an apology i yeah i'm not yeah you know all he did was text tana when this started coming out publicly and say we good i think if he turned around and like now was a what is he 33 i want to say as a 33 year old man if he turned around and said hey just want to check in and see how you are. I've been thinking a lot about what happened between us and I really didn't mean to take advantage, but I completely understand that you might have felt that way. I completely understand that what we did was wrong. Even if I felt you were consenting at the time, I should not have taken advantage like that. I'm very sorry and I hope you're okay. If there's anything you need, let me know. If he'd said something like that to her, I'd be like, you know what, yes, he has learned from this, this is great, this shows maturity, this shows growth, but he hasn't. He's just been like, we good? And like, can we cover this up essentially? Can you stop talking about it? I just, and the fact that he's not talking about it or addressing it, again, kind of makes me feel like he'd rather just cover it up than address the fact that he did something wrong and try and make amends for it, you know? That and the 
other worrying patterns of behavior we've seen from him. For example, the misogynistic jokes and stuff like that. That's kind of minor in the grand scheme of things. I think the big thing that people are concerned about is the company that he has kept and continues to keep. So one of the big things that's come out with all of this is that even before Cody met Tanner, so this was going back even longer to back when he was in college, he was, and let me see if I can find the screenshots I have about this. So Cody was in a fratern fraternity at college with a guy called Colby Leachman, and Colby was accused of raping a young woman while at university, and to read you part of the thing, um, according to the victim, on March 6th, 2011, a fellow student, Colby Leachman, drugged her and raped her. He also invited another student, Brian Self, to rape the victim while she was drugged. The rape occurred later that night in Mr. Self's dorm room. Mr. Leachman recorded a short video of the victim's rape by Mr. Self. After the event, Mr. Leachman showed the video to a few people, but not his entire fraternity. Cody Co knew about this, this was all very public. He could have potentially been shown this video because he was in the same fraternity, but we don't know if he did, but this is clearly public. Um, so at least one of Cody's friends, if not two, raped this woman. His friend raped her and then recorded her rape and showed it to other people. They drugged her. Cody continued to be friends with Colby the rapist and is still friends with him to this day to the point where he literally had him in his wedding party. And even if he didn't know this happened at the time, even if he didn't see this video at the time, it is now public knowledge now, and Cody's still friends with him. It shows a pattern of behavior where he clearly doesn't give a damn about sex crimes against women. And that is incredibly concerning. I think that I also have a really bad case of like, like I, to, to be 100% truthful, when I look back at, the Cody situation, it is, I definitely am like, why was he doing that? You know what I mean? And there were so many situations. There was a situation with Gabby Hanna at a playlist live where she pulled him aside and told him like, yo, she's 17. And then we still went and hooked up. Mm. And I can look mm -hmm. at that and be like, mm -mm 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 -mm. like, what the why fuck? the fuck were you doing that? But there isn't a part of me, at least at 25 now, I mean, I look back and I would I would never do anything like that. So I'm like, fuck what no. the fuck was wrong with you? Yeah. But I don't associate or hold it with trauma because I am such a comparative person where I'm like so many worse things have happened to me. And yeah. that's bad. I was and just I, about to say you can't do that to yourself, though. Like, but I genuinely feel that way. Like, I, I it feels like all of the other people I hooked up with when I was 18, whether yeah. they were 30 or whether they were not 30 and they were my age and they were whatever. Like I was just in a place of life, especially the circles and world I was surrounded in in Vegas and then coming to LA. Like those are, if you're in the wrong realms, those can be very sexual places. Yeah. And like I was just hooking up with people and having so much fun. And like, that's the way my mind, cause I grew up loving him. And I think I, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was just like excited and a fan and like, and I understand that that's where now as a grown adult, you can say you were taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't, I just, I don't feel any of those well, emotions towards it. So that's why it's like, it's much easier to be like, go crucify someone when you feel those emotions. Of course. You know? And I mean, whether or not you feel like that now, and I mean, at the time too, even though you felt way more mature than you act, like the, than your age, you yeah. were 17, like even though you felt grown and everything, like, and you didn't at that time, it's like you don't really know what you're doing and like you don't really think it's wrong. But mm -hmm. again, it's like he was 25. Mm. He should have fucking known better. Yeah. Like, and that's that's like I think where I settle on that. And it's like. So I think these clips are quite interesting. And this is something that um, it's actually kind of made me look back at my own life and reflect on a few things because. Because on the one hand, it's easy for us to sit here objectively and be like, yeah, okay, clearly she felt older. She felt like she was 21, but she wasn't. She wasn't actually as mature as she felt she was or thought she was. And that's what led her to be taken advantage of. Like, absolutely. But it kind of got me thinking back to my own life as well, because I, I was discussing this with Elise and Vangelina Skov before I even, like, 
decided to make a video and I was like yeah but I think like it's it's different because like we can look at her and be like yeah 17 so young and we can like worry about that and stuff and I was like but things happened to me when I was like 16 17 like that and and I wasn't a victim I'm fine like and and it's weird because like I was trying to justify the things that adult men did to me at that age and say like but that that wasn't a problem that was fine by using the same logic that Tana did here I said to Elise and Vangelina Scoff, like, but it's different because, like, at 16, like, I, I was more mature, like, I was working, I was this, I was that. And I'm like, then I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, wait, I'm doing the same thing here. And it's interesting because, like, in that way, I relate to Tana, where, like, you do these things and you think you're consenting and you think you're so grown up and you don't think there's a problem and you don't feel like a victim, but that doesn't mean you weren't taken advantage of. Just because and Tana will go on to say this later, she doesn't feel like a victim, she doesn't feel like this traumatised her because so many worse things have happened to her, and I would say the same. But that doesn't mean the things that happened to us were right. We can acknowledge that those people were in the wrong for doing that, even if it hasn't necessarily damaged us in long-term ways. What they did was still wrong, because if that happened to other people, it may damage them in ways. Does that make sense? It's like, it's like, imagine two people get mugged on the street and one person has the strength to fight off the mugger and doesn't actually lose anything, but the other person is attacked and loses all of their money that they had to live off for the next month and, and they're physically injured as well. Just because one person suffered more consequences, both attempted muggings were still crimes and were still wrong and were the fault of the mugger. Th does that make sense? And that's kind of what I think we should think about here. It doesn't necessarily matter if Tana feels like she was a victim, what Cody still did was wrong. It doesn't matter if I don't feel like a victim for what adult men did to me when I was a teenager, they were still wrong. And I think we can all realise that there are bad people out there doing bad things that should be called out without us necessarily having to be victims of them. I don't know if I'm wording this properly, I'm struggling a bit at the minute. I'm, I'm off my medication and it's been a whole thing and I'm all over the place and I don't quite feel like myself sorry <laughs> it is really interesting to me because I have my feelings towards it right and like I'm, I'm expressing those right now and I said that on stage very much so as just kind of, I was being jokey about it and whatever right and it's almost like the public's reaction to this mean. has made me feel 10 different types of ways that I didn't feel mm -hmm. before. Like I have seen so many comments of people like on some like, but what was she wearing shit? You know what I mean? Yeah. On some like, well, it's Tana Mojo. And yeah. like, oh, ew, and ew, 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 isn't ew, that crazy? Ew, it's so like, fucked up. Because I really like, you know how I feel towards it, but now seeing all of these people like not believe me and say well what if she's lying or she's this and she's that and she's dramatic first of all there's nothing I would never lie about that Fuck like no. I'm not gonna put an allegation on anyone like ever like that obviously but then it and then I just like I feel so bad for all of these young girls because then they see that and then it makes them not want to come forward and then I am like wow fuck everyone yeah like seeing people not believe you is so crazy that's fucking awful like that's and I'm grateful that I'm the type of person that I don't let things like that discourage me, but I, it just makes me feel so sad for so many people that aren't like that, you know? Like, cause like we were filming crazy YouTube videos at the time as well. And it's not like any, like at the time people were just like shipping us mm. and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So it, to happen like so much later in time is like interesting. I wonder you know I mean? too, if that's because like when your fans were watching, like they were also young and like your age or younger. So yeah. it's like, they didn't realize either. But now that like you've grown up and everyone who like loved you has grown up too with you. And like now they can look back and think and like recognize what that was, mm. you know, like it wasn't just him. You know what I mean? And there's, there's other people where I was like 17 for sure. And, but then further than that, it's like, there were so many people when I was 18, mm. 19, and 20 yep. that came flocking. You yep. know what I mean? And now I see those same people doing it to other people who are 18, 19, and 20. It's so gross. And there is a part of me that's like, it's not just him. It's the whole fucking industry and the whole world. Mm -hmm. Like, And that's like where it's, I feel sad that it is all just kind of on just him when like the problem was so much greater than that. And like yeah. there are just some real fucking 
groomers and awful people walking the streets. Yeah. You know, like it's, I don't know. Definitely. Like, and how much people love him. Like, I know. It makes me like feel so sorry for any real victims of people that are really fucking loved by people because it's they like, still get at the end of the day, they get their platform. He's going to be just fine. He's posted up in a fucking mansion. Well, and just his life is going to go on in my day to day life. Like it's like, I know for a fact, if you swapped out Cody Co with someone that like people didn't like that much, oh my I God. would be receiving so much more sympathy versus like the amount of people in this industry who like want to protect him and are like oh, talking right. to me in a way where it's like they, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. or even just friends like, but, but I love him. Like, you know what I mean? Fuck and I, the thing is, is like, I still watch his videos. Like I do think he's really funny. And like, it's, it is this weird thing of like, it, it would be easier and harder or it would be easier and less hard if he was like easily hateable. Yes. Like already just. Yes. And not, that, that makes me sad for other people in a situation like mine again, like where it's like, because I do, I feel fine. Yeah, and this was kind of like one of the big things that I wanted to speak about with this video. And I have a lot of comments that I want to read and talk about in this section because it really bothered me that so many people were blaming her because they were like, well, she she liked to go out and party at that age. She had done drugs at that age. She'd had consensual sex with other people her age at that age. Therefore, it's absolutely okay for an older man to take advantage of her. And like, no, it's absolutely not. I don't care what else you've done or you like to do or how you spend your time. If you're an underage child, essentially, you don't deserve to have an adult man take advantage of you sexually. You just don't. This isn't even just victim blaming. This is pure victim dismissal. It's like saying that you can't possibly have it's like saying you can't possibly be a victim if you've done X, Y, and Z. Or people using the fact that she's had other consensual sex in her life to make it okay. Or the people who use laws in other countries or states or whatever to make it okay. They're like, they're like, well, the age of consent is 16 in this country. It's 14 in this country. It's this, this, this. Yes. And those ages of consent are ideally meant to be used for people of that age to consent to having sex with other people their age. Like in the UK, it's 16. That that's basically saying, yes, when you're 16, you can absolutely legally consent to have sex with other people your own age. Like, that's, that's what that law is meant for. It's to allow 16-year-olds to experiment with other 16, 17, 18-year-olds. It's not saying, hey, grown adult man, come take advantage of this <sighs> inexperienced, immature teenager just because now it's legal. Just because something's legal doesn't mean it's moral. Let's uh, take a look at some of these comments. This person says, genuine question here. Where I'm from in Canada, age of consent is 16. I thought in the US it was 16 too, but reading the comments, it seems like it's 18. And then the person says, depends on the state. Like, like, I'm sorry, I don't care. It doesn't matter if the age of consent is 16 or 17 or 18. No one's arguing that it's bad for a 17 year old to be having sex when she wants to. People are saying it's bad for a grown adult man who is 25 to be taking advantage of a teenager who is vulnerable, who has been hurt by other people, who has been taken advantage of before, who he has a position of power over as well because she says in this podcast, she was a fan of his. She loved his content. She was excited to meet him. So not only did he have the position of power over her with the age, but with his status. And he took advantage of all of that. It doesn't matter what the age of consent is. It is morally still wrong. He still did a bad thing. This person here says, are there allegations that this was consensual or that he promised her favors in exchange for something like that? Like, don't get me wrong, this is weird, but it's not rape and it's eight years ago. I think it's strange to obsess over something like that. Does it really matter if she was 17 or 18? Actually, no, it, it doesn't matter which one it was because it's still wrong. 18 would be wrong too. I don't know the laws in Canada or the US, but where I come from in Europe, this is not illegal. I would feel like if something about him, I would feel like if something about him expecting sex in exchange for clout or something like that would be astronomically worse. This is a little icky, but if there's nothing else attached to it other than two people having consensual sex and being okay with it, then I don't 
really get the huge outcry. And I think this is kind of the crux of it that people don't really understand. They seem to think if something like this is technically legal, if she's over the age of consent, which is kind of like an arbitrary number anyway, then why are people mad about it? A few months won't make a difference, they don't get the huge deal. The point is it's not consensual. Because of the power dynamics, because of the massive age difference, because her brain wasn't finished developing, and his was, because he was a 25-year-old adult man in a very, very different point in his life, people are saying that she was unable to consent. She might have felt older, she might have wanted to do it at the time, but she wasn't actually in a position to be able to consent, and therefore that does make it rape. Now that doesn't mean it was traumatic for her, that doesn't necessarily mean it's something she regrets, it just means that technically that's what it was. And it's up to Tana to decide whether that affects her or not. I'm not going to sit here and say she should feel like a victim, she should feel like this, she should be... because absolutely not. I'm just saying this is what it is and what he did was wrong. I th oh, I think this is one of the worst comments. If the sex was consensual, which we already established it couldn't be, and she's using the underage narrative now for a dig. I need to know more. It seems that he's been in a relationship for a long time and hasn't been faced with any other allegations other than his rapist friend that he still supports, I guess. So I wonder what made her salty enough to come for him during the birth of his firstborn with his long-term new wife. Not saying I'm on his side, just saying that's gotta be something, just saying there's gotta be something there that we don't see. She was having plenty of sex with 18 plus people as a minor, so I'm really wondering why the smoke now. And actually this is a thing that Tana has discussed. She says Cody wasn't the only one. He's not the only problem here. She says it's a systemic problem, it's a societal problem. There were plenty of men taking advantage of her and her friends like this, and she's saying it's all wrong. And she's not doing this for a dig because she wants to ruin his life, she's not doing this for a dig because he's had a baby. She's saying this because she's finally ready to speak about it. She's at an age now where she realises just how wrong it was because she's the age that he was when it happened. And she's like, oh crap, I get how messed up this is now. That's what's changed. It's not him having a baby or anything. It's that she's finally processed it in her head. This person says, if a woman can be considered an adult at 17 when she commits crimes, why can't she be considered an adult when she uses her sexuality to further her career? That's not what she was doing. She was taken advantage of. Like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Give us some credit. She knew exactly what she was doing and what she wanted from him and how far she would go to get it. I was 17 once and the narrative that all teenagers are idiots and suddenly more capable of making decisions at midnight when they turn 18 is a load of BS. It is, because it doesn't just change overnight, it still takes time. And that's why no adults who are 25, 26, 30, 40 older should be taking advantage of any teenagers. This is why we have issues with people who, when there's big age gaps and the younger person is anywhere under like, what, 24? That's when it can absolutely be a problem. I mean, you have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, but this is why. Just saying, well, she was 18, so it was legal. The age of consent was 16, so she was legal. That's why that's not okay. Because it's not about the age, it's not about the number. It's about what these power dynamics are and where the imbalances are and who's taking advantage of who. It doesn't matter, and that's why, again, it doesn't matter if Tana was 17 or 18 and she was 17. What matters is that she was vulnerable. She was taken advantage of by someone a lot older than her, with a lot more experience than her, who she was a fan of. That, uh, this person clearly is just a misogynist, though. Women are very manipulative and know exactly how weak men are and how lust can work in their favour. By bringing up the story now, she's using him once again to make herself relevant. He looks like an immature young man in the video. She seems more in control of the interactions. Do some slang. Do some teen okay, slang. Okay, well, I was gonna like write it. Alright, so I'm way too old to be on YouTube, obviously. Same. I mean, I turned uh, over really soon, and it's just kind of like the end of my career. You know, it's it's sad. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you need you need to stop. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. I'm joking. This is me. it. She knows a whole bunch of slang and cool <laughs> words because she's you know. A teen, whatever, so I'm here basically just to learn some teen slang, right? So do you want to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love to! No, seriously, I'm just like your biggest fan, like, this is such an honor, like, oh my god. If you want to empower women, at least give them the benefit of the doubt that they are capable of being clever manipulators and not always victims, except she's not 
an adult woman, she was a 17 year old girl and she wasn't more in control and he wasn't this immature young man, he was a grown adult. She's not using this to make herself relevant. No, no woman wants to be... When I made the video on the I'm Alex situation, again, one of the things I addressed was people saying, oh, she's just doing this for cloud, she's doing this because we... No, absolutely not. If anything, I'd say Tana's got the bigger career than Cody, she seems more successful than him. At, at least from an outsider's perspective, I don't know if that's actually true, but that's just what it seems. Um, so I don't think she needs to use him for any attention or anything like that. But even if she did want to use him for attention in some way, there are better ways of getting attention than by saying, he did this bad thing to me, he hurt me in this way, he used me in this way. No woman wants to be known for being a victim of something. No woman wants to be known because she was sexually assaulted. People saying that are insane, and I don't think they realise what they're actually saying. Because, again, it's just a way to dismiss the victims of sexual assault and rape by saying, like, oh, you're just doing it for attention, as though it's some interesting, silly little thing that women want to happen to them because it gets them attention. No. No one wants that to happen to them, and no one wants to get attention for that happening to them. It just, it... Another person says... To bring this up six years later to try and ruin someone's life is a little ridiculous in my opinion. Except she's not trying to ruin his life, and it's more than six years later. But she's not trying to ruin his life, she's just trying to speak out about something that happened to her and say this is wrong. And she is saying this is an industry-wide problem. And the way I see it, she's doing it more to warn other young women and young girls than she is to try and counsel Cody or whatever it is, you know? It kind of bothers me that she's the one who had this experience and people are still trying to make it all about the man who hurt her. Baffling. Another person says, my god, the way people throw around the predatory accusation these days is ridiculous. It's losing all meaning. Or maybe you're just not able to see what a predator is. You thought of that? I've not heard what she said, <laughs> of course, but I have heard that she said 17 and then corrected herself to 18. Yeah, like two years ago and now she's saying, no, I was 17. Even still, when she was that age, she was in 21 plus clubs and drinking all the time, and so someone could be forgiven for thinking that she might be 21. Except, she was a public figure, it was public knowledge that she was 17. Gabby Hanna, of all people, who you know I have problems with, told him she's 17 back off, and he didn't. He knew all the information, he had all the opportunities to leave, and he didn't. He still took advantage. The fact she's waited six plus years to mention it says a lot also, as she's no doubt using it for her own benefit, i.e. to create greater profile for herself, which is disingenuous and an attempt to paint something as predatory when it, in reality it was entirely consensual and as a power imbalance, I can't even speak, this is making me so angry. I can't. I can't deal with this absolute nonsense. I can't. It, it bothers me that people actually think this way and believe these things. Like, it makes me never want to leave the house again, knowing that there are people out there in the world who think this way. <sighs> this person says, maybe we're getting into semantics here, but a 17 year old is not the same as a child or preteen. A 17 year old knows right and wrong. They're, they're responsible for the choices they make. If a 17 year old agrees to have sex with a 25 year old, they are consenting to have sex with them. Therefore, they are having consensual sex. Whether it's legal or not isn't what I'm talking about. It's illegal to have sex with someone 18, but it can still be consensual. Literally the opposite. It can be legal, but not consensual. I, I work on a farm with an 18-year-old who started dating her 28-year-old boyfriend when she was 17. I'm not sure if they waited till she turned 18 to have sex, but there's no difference in her brain in a matter of months. Yeah, exactly. It's wrong anyway, whether she was 17 or 18. That is creepy and predatory. Why couldn't he find someone his own age? Why did he have to go for a child? I don't get why people are acting like a 17 year old and 18 year old are drastically different. You're still in high school when you're 18, yet it's okay to sleep with a 25 year old in the eyes of the public because of the law. But it's disgusting for a 25 year old to sleep with someone one year younger. No, it's disgusting either way. If they're 17 or 18, I don't care. If they're still in school, if they're at that different stage in life to you, if they're that much younger than you, it's still wrong. I would probably say the same if she was 19 as well. And then more misogyny. I'm 26 and would never be attracted to a 17 year old. I'm not even attracted to 25 year olds, but I'm a woman. And we all know men are effing dumb. And as long as girls hot 
and DTF, their moral slash integrity, usually go out the window. Sorry, can we not baby men like this and say, oh, boo-hoo, they couldn't resist the pretty girl. It's not their fault. It's the girl's fault for being pretty and tempting them. No, stop it. Everyone can control their penis. I don't care how pretty you find someone. If they're a child, you don't sleep with them. And then there's all the people who, again, are blaming her because of her actions. This person who says, I'm sure she's not the only person who slept with her under underage, not justifying it, just saying, except you are trying to justify it, aren't you? And it's not okay. And she's saying he's not the only one, and that's the problem. This person says, where's the actual proof, though? This Tanner person seems to have made a lot of claims about a lot of things that didn't end up being true. Has everything Tanner said ever always true? Has ever... Is everything Tana said ever always true? Learn to write. I don't know, I need to see some proof. Tana made a career out of lying, so yeah, innocent until proven guilty. Exactly, so many people are jumping to conclusions, and Tana has a lengthy history of being unreliable. There's nothing to actually suggest Cody is like that. Tana, on the other hand, is known for starting different dramas. She's known for lying on purpose to start said dramas. At the same time, she's still friends with actual trial actual child predators like James Charles. Didn't she call out James Charles? I've no idea. I don't know about that. If that's true, he's a creep. Stop it. But, hang on, wait, there's more actually before I, before I go into this. more. She's always been so toxic. Why are people quick to believe her? Tana loves to throw people under the bus to get ahead. Remember when she went crazy on that wine tour company? Hmm, should I believe a liar that lies all the time or Cody? I need context. How do we know she wasn't lying about her age? We literally know nothing about this beyond a few things she said. And by the way, this was eight years ago. Why has she been making all these jokes about Cody's D and gossiping about sleeping with him and has not said anything about how young she was until now? Cody's not more popular than her. Nothing bad would happen to her if she would have said this sooner. Yeah, but... This just seems like one big joke to her and so she came out with this coincidentally right after Cody had a baby and is happy and settled. Interesting. We don't know what the hell she could have told him. Underage people lie about their ages all the time. We wouldn't be surprised if she said, oh, I lied about when I was born. The internet doesn't know my actual age just to sleep with him. E and even though she was younger, she was also way more popular than Cody. So why did she, re she wait a ridiculous amount of time to come out with it? This is absolutely disgusting, humiliating, and in no way funny in my opinion. Cody and his wife, Kelsey, just recently had a baby for God's sake. She must have known she would potentially ruin him with all this. What a piece. She has on her own accord stated numerous times, slash continues to state, how toxic of a person she is and how much she lies and manipulates and she's always been a clout chaser and always will be. This crap is so messed up. She thinks she can say and do whatever the F she wants because she has notoriety in a big platform. Mm, no girl, the fame has gone to her head and in my opinion, she, should, she really should be cancelled. Honestly, I wouldn't believe anything Tana said because it's been proven numerous times that she flat out makes up things for her content regardless of who it hurts or how manipulative she is. And then it just goes on, blah blah blah, manipulative, liar, look at me, look at me. Can we stop? Yeah, because Tana's a super reliable source of information. This woman is an utter mess. I feel like she's doing this for attention and just out of spite. I... Can we not? Can we absolutely not? There is nothing here that suggests she is lying, that she made this up, she's not exaggerating about anything. Like, it's just, people will say and do and think anything to villainize a woman and not accept that some men are just predatory. Some men make mistakes, some men mess up, some men do bad things. Just even the ones who seem funny and charming on the surface can be pigs behind the scenes. I don't think we can really compare things like Tana being 15 years old and making some silly story time about a dream she had about a guy effing her with a toothbrush, which is the clip people always like to bring up. I don't think we can really compare that to her sitting down now while she's sober, as she was in this video, she was going through a patch of being sober, and her saying, yeah, look, I've really thought about this, I processed this, this is how I feel about it, and making a really reasonable, well thought out statement. Like, I don't think they're comparable. Silly stories she made as a teenager for attention on YouTube videos or a well thought out statement while she's an adult and sober. They're not comparable, are they? And I also kind of hate this idea that you need to be a perfect victim to be believed. You know, this idea that like, if you've ever misremembered something, then we can't believe you. If you've ever made a stupid joke about something, then we can't believe you. If you've ever... I don't know, had sex with someone consensually, then you can't possibly have been raped. Do you, you know what I mean? It's 
like I say, it's like people will do anything to just not believe women. And I don't get it. And when I say that, I, I do mean women, but also in general, people just don't want to believe victims, do they? Regardless of what gender they are. People will do anything than just listen to a victim speaking and believe them. I made a comment in my video on I'm Alex where I was like, yeah, it's like, believe women, right? And I think it's very clear to most reasonable people that that means, in general, believe victims, although most of them happen to be women, but believe victims when they speak out. And the amount of mostly men who were so angry about that in the comments, who were like, how dare you say this? This is misinformation. We should not believe victims. We should not do this. Which, And I got essays of people telling me why we shouldn't believe victims when they speak out. And I'm like, you are what's wrong with the world. And then just like in the I'm Alex video, there were people in there saying that like, it doesn't matter that he's abused his girlfriend physically and verbally and emotionally and financially. He's still funny, so I'm still gonna watch his videos. You have people saying the same thing about Cody Ko here. This one says, I still love Cody Ko and his videos. These comments can suck my bum. Wow, this news is awful. You always seem so wholesome, especially the videos with him and Kelsey. Especially the videos him and Kelsey do together. Still gonna watch his videos though. Like I get separating the art from the artist in certain cases. Like, you know, you can still say like, that's a pretty painting of some flowers without needing to know the entire background of the person who painted it, right? But I feel like when the art is videos of Cody and his personality and his life and his thoughts and his feelings and his actions, then his past actions do come into this. And I don't understand how you can separate them in this case and still be okay with watching him and supporting him. I also don't get these people who are like, I need to see solid proof, I need the receipts, I need to... Like, do you have proof of every person you've ever slept with? Like, this person says, just as a reminder people, there have definitely been people online who've had their online presence ruined, or at least at stake, because of false allegations. It is difficult to prove this happened without a shadow of a doubt, but there's no actual receipts of her story. No texts or calls or screenshots of T Cody trying to get her to hook up with him. No one who knows the two of them corroborate no one who knows the two of them corroborating Tana's story. All we have is her testimony, which is not substantial enough to prove that he's a pedo slash creep slash groomer. Do you have proof of every person you've ever slept with? Because I know I don't. And these are the ones where like, you know, it happened consensually. I don't have proof of that. I don't, I don't know take a photo every time I'm in bed with someone. I don't get them to text me, hey, can you just say that we're having sex? Yeah, cool, got you. Who does that? Sometimes things just happen in the moment. You meet someone in a bar, a club, an event, you go home with them, you have sex, that's it, you're done. You don't collect proof of everything that happened in your life. I just, she's not, Tana's not even being unreasonable here. She's not wanting anything bad to happen to Cody. He's essentially admitted it with her like, hey, are we okay? text to her, that sort of thing. Like, he's not denying it. Why are people so unwilling to believe it when there's no evidence to the contrary? I just, I just feel like when I see situations like this, it makes me realize how far women and victims of sex crimes still have to go. People try so hard to protect the cute, funny guy over actual victims because I guess that's easier isn't it than believing that someone who seemed nice isn't I just I don't know I don't know talking about topics like these and there's been a few recently are just making me kind of like lose all faith in humanity and and I don't know I just I hope that even though I'm frustrated and I'm annoyed and I'm upset that I can at least maybe try and put a little bit of good back into the world with these videos. As a final little thing, what I would say is, and I know I don't really have a teenage audience, but if I do, or if you know any teenagers, what I would say to them is, it doesn't matter how old you feel, it doesn't matter how mature you feel, it doesn't matter what experiences you've been through in life, an adult, where there is a considerable age gap has no business being involved with you sexually. 
there is no way that interaction can be fully consensual with the power dynamics at play. If you are an adult watching this and you're considering a sexual relationship or a romantic relationship with a teenager or person who is a lot, lot younger than you and, you know, under 24, don't. There is no way that can be consensual. Just don't do it. Find someone your own age. To anyone who has been in those positions where you have been the teenager with an older person, I get it. And it's easy to make excuses for it and say that, well, I was different, I was mature. Like, I consented because you probably felt like you did. I know I felt like I did and I was making all these excuses about why they weren't bad guys and why it was okay. And then something like this comes up and I realize how messed up it all was. And another part of it is I've gone back and looked at photos of myself as a teenager and I'm like, I looked like a child. How anyone could see me at 16 and 17, like, how any grown adult man in their late 20s could look at me at that age and find me attractive is... It's insane. It's disgusting. It's... It's wrong. It's very simply wrong. And like I say, that's not to say that those of us that that, that happened to are victims, that we need to have trauma, that we need to be sad about it, we need to hurt... But no, absolutely not we can still take positive things from those experiences while realising that they are objectively morally wrong and we need to speak out to stop them happening to anyone else. Because just because we didn't have trauma, that doesn't mean other people won't. One of the things that really annoys me is when I get comments or read things from people saying that when older, older women like myself in my 30s speak out about this, we're bitter and jealous because we're, we're just mad that the men our age want younger girls and not us. And it's like, no, absolutely not. It's, it's because we've been there. We've experienced that. We know what it's like and how it feels to be that younger girl and how it isn't actually that good. We understand the power dynamics more than we did when we were that age. It's because we understand that there are men who will take advantage of women who are so much younger and more naive and more vulnerable. It's because we don't want to see people being hurt. There's no jealousy or bitterness because why would a woman like myself be interested in being with a man who only wants a woman he can control because of their naivety, their vulnerability, and their inexperience. I would not want to be with someone like that. So it's not about jealousy because I want them instead. It's worry because I don't want what I went through and what other women went through to happen to these young girls and young women. I don't want them to have the same trauma that other people did. It's because I want to protect them while I still can. Just personally, I don't need to be jealous or bitter of anything. I've got a wonderful partner, and if I wasn't with him, a lot of options out there. Pretty good, doing fine, don't worry. The worry is that I don't want to see other young women being hurt. And I don't understand why that's so hard for people to understand. I don't get why if you have a choice where, let's say you don't know the full situation and, and you have to make a decision, why would you rather side with, well, let's take the risk and if they get hurt, they get hurt, but it's okay because I'd rather that happen and call you jealous and bitter instead of, you know what, yeah, let's take precautions and try and protect these vulnerable young people. Why would you rather go to insult older women and put young ones at risk rather than believe the older women and protect the younger ones. Why is that your first choice? Why is that your go-to? I just, I don't get it. I don't know. Anyway, this is why I script normally, because now I'm just rambling. <sighs> okay. Right, you know what? This has not been a nice video. This has not been, this has not been the easiest video to film. This is not light. This is not fun. But here we are. I felt it was important to say it. And, um, Hopefully you guys can share your thoughts in the comments below as well. Let's 
not have any victim blaming, please. Let's not have any misogyny. <sighs> Let's just not, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, please, if, if you've been in a similar place, please feel free to share your experiences as well. Um, it would be nice to see some support for Tana and other women in her situation. Um, I don't know, let me know how you think we should be talking about these issues. Yeah, I don't know, I feel like a lot going on in my head right now. But anyway, thank you for watching today. I appreciate you guys a lot. Sorry, my head's a little all over the place. I'm kind of brain foggy. I've been having issues getting my medication. So I had these big withdrawals for like two weeks and now I'm kind of coming out of that and I'm just sad and anxious and um, whatever this is. So I'm struggling with that a bit, but I'm, I'm working through it. We're, we're doing okay, right? I don't know, we'll see how things go. But yeah, if you wanna go follow me over on social media, I post all my fun personal life stuff and lots of cool photography and art stuff over on my Instagram, at Rachel Oates, with a zero instead of an O, because my name was taken and I'm annoying like that. You'll also see cute photos of Kyra, who I'm wearing on my jumper, and she's been pottering around this video and snoring in the background like a good little monkey butt. And um, yeah, it'd be great if you wanna follow me over there. Uh, feel free to subscribe to this channel, like this video, leave a comment, all that good stuff. I talk a lot about feminist issues, social commentary, book reviews, poetry, whatever I fancy really, it's all, all fun, all good stuff. But yeah, for now, thank you for watching, I appreciate you a lot, and I'll see you again soon. Bye. I don't know what the thumbs up was, but there you go. <laughs>